Where Hawaii Eats is brought to you by the Honolulu Star Advertisers Dining Out, Outrigger Waikiki Hotels and Resorts, Cisco Hawaii, Stanford Car Development LLC, Hawaii Cancer Care, and JN Automotive Group. Welcome to Where Hawaii Eats. We are in Kahala uh, at Kapahale, Chef Kiaka Lee's restaurant. Hi, Chef. Thank you for doing the show. Thank you for having me. Can you tell me what you prepared for us today? Yeah, of course. Uh, we have a nanya business with uh, fresh garlic naan and a tikka masala and um, Sumida Farms um, namu. So we take the namu and we put a little bit of sesame oil and sesame seeds and season it. So we're combining um, both Indian flavors and Korean flavors together. Next, we have our grilled taco with lomi tomato, um, some pickled turnips, and a black garlic char siu glaze. Beautiful. Yeah. And we have our fresh pasta uh, made in house, a uh, kawaii shrimp um, bulgogi with uh, pickled peppers, garlic, and um, fresh basil. Here we have our lemon semifredo. Uh, it is my take on a lemon meringue pie. It has a lily koi curd, a lemon crumble, and a kappa meringue. It looks delicious. Can we, can we um, sample these? Yeah, please. Go ahead. The name Kapahale, what, what does that mean to you? How did you cr come up with the name Kapahale? Kapa is an uh, ancient Hawaiian art in which they take um, bark cloth from the paper mulberry tree. Thank you. And um, what we do is um, we pound it out, uh, ferment it, dry it out to make um, clothing. Um, so back in the 1700s of, in Hawaii, um, they use it for clothing and the kings of Hawaii used to um, have some printing on it, which tells a story. So when I look at a blank plate and a blank piece of kappa, I see the relation there. And um, it is my turn to pass on my knowledge of what I learned onto the plate, basically sharing my vision. Yeah, so we have patterns, whether it's patterns of kappa or um, just using fresh product and um, using our fresh farmers and stuff. So the location also signifies kappa. Can you kind of tell me a little bit more yeah. about that? So we are located on the corner of Kilauea Avenue. So we take the KA and Pahoa Avenue PA. So it's kappa right here um, in the Kahala district. And is that how you came to find this location as well? Actually, um, we found out it was a cool thing that we figured out later. Um, it was nice that it kind of came together. Um, but for me, I grew up in the community, uh, went to Kalani High School, uh, went to KCC for uh, culinary school, and um, it's just very special for me to be here um, in the Kahala area. So have you worked alongside some great chefs in Hawaii, such as Russell Sue from 3660 on the Rise and Chef Alan Wong. Yep. Tell me about your other culinary journeys on the mainland. Yeah, so after working for those great chefs, um, I wanted to learn something different. So my journeys took me to San Francisco and um, went to uh, this place called Bennu. Uh, learned a lot there, um, very grateful for Corey Lee. And um, something just wasn't, didn't, didn't feel right. Like, I wanted to go even further. So uh, my journey took me to New York City, uh, worked at some pretty cool places. Uh, worked for Eric Repair at La Bernadette, um, uh, Daniel Ballou at Cafe Ballou. Um, then I found my, the place that I've been looking for. Um, worked under Chef Michael Anthony at Gramercy Tavern. Um, means a lot to me. Learned a lot about American cuisine, um, losing uh, fresh vegetables and fresh products. Basically making the vegetable shine. Oh. Yeah. So then with this path, you came back to Hawaii and you opened this restaurant, one of the few that opened during a pandemic. Yeah, I didn't plan to open during a pandemic, I signed my lease in November 2019. Um, but how I look at it is, um, I had my daughter uh, was born in January 2020. And part about building this restaurant was to um, provide for my family. And I decided that to push through, um, use the experience I got from San Francisco, from New York City, and as well as Hawaii. and just try to feed the community. So would you say that the, um, the menu is kind of a balance of vegetarian as well as basically something for everybody? Mm -hmm. So there is a whole section of vegetables, which I keep on every parts of the menu. 
So we have brunch, lunch, and dinner. And uh, vegetables mean uh, a lot to me. Um, I think it's important that people eat more vegetables and also support our local farmers. We'll be right back after this commercial break and we'll talk story a little bit more with Chef Kyaka Lee and perhaps there will be a new menu item on the table. Let's try this item. Welcome back. Um, we have a beautiful new dish that appeared on the plate. Can you tell me what that is, please? This is our ahi carpaccio. So we actually put um, a cup of print on there which represents the mona. Lovely, lovely. Let's, let's try yeah. some more of the stuff. So this one has um, fresh island ahi. Mm -hmm. And then what we do is we take it and we mix it all up. We have a nori puree with a preserved lemon mixed with some fresh arugula and some pickled shallots. That looks amazing. Can you kind of tell me how the menu comes to life? Right? Do you change the menu through the seasons? Um, for somebody that hasn't dined here before, can you tell me what kind of, what, what they can expect when they dine here? Yeah, so when they come to Kapahale, um, we have a modern take on Hawaii regional cuisine. So we try to support our local farmers, fisheries, um, and for the most part, keep things fresh. So the menu was revamped recently mm -hmm. in March. Yeah, so we opened up in um, December, but we revamped the menu um, beginning of March. Um, we try to change it throughout the seasons. You know, Hawaii alone doesn't really have seasons, but um, our farmers go through cycles of different products. So we try to keep up with them. So on your brunch menu, mm -hmm. can you tell me a little bit of what, what offerings are? Yeah, so we have fun items. Um, so we have our take on a croque madame. We call it the croque wahine. It's basically a crispy um, barbecue and cheese sandwich mm -hmm. topped with um, some gouda mornay and um, a fried egg. Nice. So what other offerings do you have? Yep. So we change our pancakes every month. Um, this, this month we have a apple and um, cinnamon pancake. Uh, last month we had a poi pancake. Um, but we also have our famous um, chicken and waffles um, with um, our chicken's a little different. We do uh, karaoke style and um, with some lemon and honey. So what is the most popular dish here? Good question. Um, one of the two favorites has actually what you're eating now, which is the Nanya business. Um, and um, of course the dessert, um, the lemon semifredo. Is there anything else you want to share about the restaurant? It's a family owned restaurant. Um, during this difficult time, we we're very grateful uh, for the opportunity to uh, cook for the community. And then the community itself um, has been showing a lot of support. And everyone's just been show, um, supporting local. Um, very, um, means a lot, it means a lot to my heart, yeah. What are, I mean, can, what do you think about in the future with larger parties and things like that? Do, what do you see moving forward? Um, so right now we're very lucky um, to be having um, parties of 10 and 2021 has been very hopeful for us. Um, small business alone have been struggling, especially restaurants. Um, so with the tiers opening up, it definitely helps. Um, for um, the future, we're just looking forward to having private dining, some buyouts, um, but safety is number one for our guests and for our, um, our workers. Now I know that you do have a BYOB program right now, so there is some chatter about you having a cocktail program coming soon, is that correct? Yes, so we're very lucky um, and we're very close to having our liquor license and um, we'll have fun cocktails, um, some fun rinds to go pair well with the food. Well that's going to be exciting, we look forward to that for sure. Well, Chef Allen was on the show and he had mentioned how proud he was of you opening up the restaurant oh, and he gave you a shout out. Oh. So he, I mean, continued success yeah. and um, the food is amazing, very fresh. We're always looking for great restaurants that, you know, it, everything comes from your heart and everything is intentional and you can taste that in the dishes. I think that's why you have such a loyal following as well. You're very talented at what you do. So I can't wait to see what else you, you do. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Um, thank you very much for watching Where Hawaii Eats. Thank you very much, Chef Kiaka, for preparing this lovely food and, and sharing some time with us. Oh, thank you for having me. This is amazing.
Welcome to Where Hawaii Eats. We are at the beautiful Outrigger Waikiki Resort at the Voyager 47 Club Lounge. Joining me today is President and CEO of Outrigger Hospitality Group, Jeff Wagner. Hi, Hi Jeff. How are you today? I'm good, I'm good. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me, I appreciate it. I'm really excited to talk about the food. Can you tell me what all your amazing chefs have made for us today? We've got a lot of food here today, Anne, so get ready. So, uh, you know, let's start with Duke's. You know, Duke's is just such an incredible, iconic restaurant here at the Outrigger Waikiki. And one of my favorites is the, the, the tacos, the fish tacos. Uh, I like it grilled. And, uh, you know, they just do a fabulous job. It probably sells the most on their entire menu, but uh, they're fantastic. Love to try it if you yes, would like to have yes, one. Please, please. All right, so why don't you go right in and grab okay. one and I'll grab the other and uh, okay. let's see what we have here. These are wonderful. Oh my gosh. It's a lot of food. It is a lot of food. So, okay. I'm going right in. Go for it. Mm. Amazing. This is very good. So, so that's Dukes, and you know Dukes is, has been around such a long time. Mm -hmm. Henry Capono still playing every Sunday. The music is fabulous, so it's really great to, to still have that be a piece of the Outrigger Waikiki. So second, we'll go over to, uh, to Hula Grill. So Hula Grill is on the second floor of the same hotel on the Outrigger Waikiki. And, right uh, next just, door. Right next door. Just a fabulous menu. And one of the things on that menu that has been on for a long time is the Kamari steak. And this Kamari steak is not like typical Kamari that you'd see. Mm -hmm. It's literally a steak that they, that they cut up into slices and then they've got a lemon caper sauce as wow. well. And that really tops it off as a nice addition. So let's well, jump into this. this. This is one of my favorites. So okay. let's go right in. So who's the GM over there at Hula Grill? So Drew Crocker is the GM. Drew does an amazing job. He's such a, a good leader of that team. And uh, such a nice man. He is. And you know, he had left and come back and we're so honored to have him back with us. So I'm gonna okay. go right in for a bite here. Very good. Excellent. Crispy calamari mm. is perfect. Very nice. And then GM at Duke's Way Kiki is Kaylee Ecopia. Yes, Kaylee does. Uh, he's also been around a while with the, the family here and uh, and does a great job at the restaurant. So okay. we are so uh, the talent that we have at all of these restaurants is mm. just amazing. And the talent here in Waikiki, at all the restaurants in Waikiki, leadership in the restaurants has really grown over the years. And so we're, we're really honored with the team that we've got put together here. Now we gotta go on to... So we're gonna move on to, to Appetito. Okay. So Appetito um, really is, is over at the Ohana East and they've done a wonderful job with their menu uh, and the renovation there at the property as well. And so, they, we've got two dishes here today. We've got Naomi's spicy meatball, which I know is one of your favorites really so, from what I'm hearing. So, <laughs> so we'll we'll dive into that and, and grab a bite. And then the other is portobello fry mushrooms, mushroom portobello mushroom fries. And there's an aioli sauce. Um, it's a pesto aioli sauce that goes with it as a as a, a nice compliment. So, why don't we jump into one of these fries okay. first? Okay. This is very good. I've had these before as well. These are, this is my favorite over there. They've got incredible pizzas as well, and the meatball is great, uh, but Appetito has really come on strong as a restaurant. How do they keep the portobello so crunchy? Mm. There's a science to this because... Just a little bit of fry work can do wonders Just if you something. fry things, they yep. stay crispy? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> But it's, it's fantastic. Uh, that's just such a, a great addition to over there. And it's unique, you know, it's something mm -hmm. that you don't see everywhere. All right, we're gonna jump into the this meatball. This is, this, this meatball, because originally she had it three separate meatballs right, and then right. they kind of cultivated and made a larger meatball to make the flavor profile and make it more juicy and consistent from my understanding. Yeah, that's correct. And, and I dipped it in the, the sauce here so you could get a nice uh, piece of the spice out of here. Not every day do you get served by the CEO of the <laughs> I'm glad to do it. All right. What do you think? It's amazing. Consistent consistency of the meat. There's like a hint of spice. It's really good. It's well done. Yeah, very nice. Mm. 
think I just want to eat the whole thing. <laughs> we can put that on your plate if you'd like. But, uh, you know, I, I'm so proud of, of the team at Appetito, you know, because it's not right here on the beach. Mm -hmm. And they've got an incredible following now. The, the yeah. bar, you know, is packed on a nightly basis. And uh, it's nice to have that. You know, you look at that whole Cahillo corridor has mm -hmm. transitioned significantly. And there's a lot of good restaurants and places to eat there now. Yes. All right. So now, you know, this is uh, Maui Brewing Company. And I, you know, they do some incredible work over there. They've got a great poke bowl, mm -hmm. but they also have great pizzas. And so this pizza today is the Brewmaster pizza. Okay. And one of the things about um, Maui Brewing Company and you know Garrett and, and Sean, the general manager over there and the team, they do their pizza crust with beer. So the Bikini Blonde beer is what they utilize to create their crust. And so uh, the Brewmaster pizza is a perfect, it's my favorite over there, but uh, they have many, many good dishes. Now, to complement that, it wouldn't be right to not have a beer. So is that the segue for us to open our beer now? It is, okay. it is, it's time. So, <laughs> so uh, Anne has the Coconut Hiva beer, which is her favorite from Maui Brewing, and mine is the Pineapple Mon. So I think it's time It's to... like a champagne cork. Right? Yeah. We're gonna take a quick break and we'll be right back with Jeff Wagner and we'll learn more about the restaurants. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome back. Uh, we have to try this Brewmaster pizza that is one of your favorites. Absolutely. So um, Brewmaster pizza, as we mentioned earlier, is made with uh, the crust is made actually with Bikini Blonde beer at Maui Brewing. And it is definitely one of my favorites. So definitely we're going into some desserts here in a minute. So we need to go ahead and have the pizza before we do the desserts. <laughs> Let's give this it a shot. Amazing. Mm. Very good. Why is this? Why is this your favorite? Great flavors, uh, meats and vegetable on the mm. pizza. Clearly, the crust is is spectacular, but uh, just love this pizza. I'm a a low carb kind of guy, and uh, but if someone puts pizza in front of me, it's my weakness for sure. So uh, so this is one that uh, is my go to for sure. But they do have a cauliflower crust option too. And that right? works for my low carb, so it, it gives me some <laughs> rationale for why I should do it. Very cool. So let's jump into some desserts. What okay. All right. So, you know, first let's go to uh, Aroma Cafe uh, has a few different locations here in Waikiki, and one of them is in the Beachcomber and one is in the Ohana East, and they do just an amazing acai bowl. And so I wanted to for us to be able to try that and, and uh, take a, a taste. There you go, you got it. Perfect. Now Jonathan, the owner over there, uh, is really creative and, and has done a great job creating a, a menu that really works for breakfast and lunch. Um, they're doing cocktails now, and then obviously the coffees, lattes and, and coffee and so forth. So a, a really nice alternative uh, to the coffee scene here in Waikiki. This is really fresh and delicious. Very good. Mm. Now, All right, Anne, are you ready? We have this beautiful hula pie. Okay, so hula pie, you know, Dukes and Hula Grill. This is one of the kind of their famous desserts. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you can eat all that, but, you know, we'll give it a shot here and see what we can do. So, dig right in. Okay. We're going to go right to the hula pie. I'm We're not right even here. Okay. Amazing. Mm. It is so good. Now tell me what what type of childhood memories do you have of your favorite foods growing up? You know, we had uh, eight kids in my family. And um, so there was 10 of us sitting around the table and my mom cooked every night and we all ate together. So, uh, you know, things like chicken and dumplings, um, fried chicken, uh, Salisbury steak, you know, all those, you know, t typical, you know, staples of, you know, large families all eating together. Um, and you know what, we, we grew up in, in Northern Virginia. Um, from a food standpoint, there wasn't really a lot of traditional foods that, that were, you know, it wasn't a big Italian area or, or Tex-Mex, but 
I spent a lot of my time in Texas as an adult, and uh, and I am really fond of, of Tex-Mex. So don't find a lot of it here in Hawaii. Uh, I'd love to see something pop up here at mm. some point, but maybe we will. Maybe this will embark somebody's interest in doing that. Never know. So there's um, a couple of great things to, to anticipate that are happening at the Outrigger Reef. Can you kind of share that? Absolutely. The reef is going under a complete $80 million transformation. And part of that is the, the food and beverage environment and how we're curating that property. And so, you know, Kanakapila Grill has always been a staple of that property with all the Hawaiian music. And we're excited to continue with that tradition. We're moving the stage, we're creating more room, we're renovating that entire restaurant and we'll open that back up sometime during the summer. So we're excited about that. Also, we are going to have a new restaurant come into the, the beachfront space. So uh, Monkey Pod is coming in, Monkey Pod Kitchen, and we're excited about that. We think they'll be finished by the end of December, and that's going to create a really nice anchor at oh, the property. Very nice, very Definitely. nice. Um, and I, I think of the tie-in of everything and everything for us to look forward to, to come in. There's so many amazing restaurants to choose from, from all of your different properties. You know, we these are great partners of ours, and, and we really uh, are proud that they're uh, in the journey with us in, in each one of these uh properties and we look forward to continuing to have those types of partners in the future. Thank you so much for sharing all of this and sharing all this wonderful food. Um, let's finish eating and cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Anne. Thank you. Where Hawaii Eats was brought to you by the Honolulu Star Advertiser Dining Out, Outrigger Waikiki Hotels and Resorts, Cisco Hawaii, Stanford Car Development LLC, Hawaii Cancer Care, and JN Automotive Group.